Hello everyone, uh, uh, welcome to my channel, uh, Share and Care. Uh, today uh, we'll be discussing about uh, fasting, nutritionist. As I said earlier, uh, my video, uh, we have George, uh, uh, thanks George for coming and sitting down with me to discuss this topic. Uh, before uh, start up of uh, this uh, conversation, uh, I would like to have disclaimer that those who are taking medications uh, have to take uh, advice from the nutritionist or especially doctor. Uh, this is purely uh, experience uh, decisions we are uh, discussing today, uh, but it's very important to have your medications uh, before trying anything else and look at your body. This is number one. This channel, as I said yesterday, is purely share and care, share your experience. And this is about the people who have uh, into this for a long time. Uh, they implemented, they studied, they read and they checked. So they, they are experts and they, they have experience. So uh, let's start, uh, let's not waste the time, let's grab um, a maximum from the George. Uh, welcome George, I think, uh, thanks for sitting down with me and uh, discussing about this uh, uh, forum. Uh, I, you remember, um, we, we met uh, three months back, I think uh, it was not a formal uh, 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 discussion about the health and we connected uh, so nicely. And from that uh, point onwards, I think we have been discussing so many things and uh, the first uh, uh, episode and channel is because of you and many others who uh, inspired me. So uh, let me throw out uh, a couple of questions uh, and uh, I need uh, you to answer and help the people about your journey. Uh, can you just uh, talk about you, your early uh, 20s, 90s, how you, how you were and uh, how, how do you think about the health, about everything? Sure. For, first of all, thank you for having me here. I'm very happy to be here and congratulations on your channel. Wish you the best. Uh, just like you said uh, very well, it's a disclaimer. So everything I say is not based on any medical background or anything like this. It's based on experience and what I've, uh, what I've witnessed throughout uh, my journey. So uh, I advise everybody to consult with their doctor. Um, okay. Don't take what I say for granted. Do your own research, that's for sure. So uh, to start, uh, I always been to a sport, uh, sports person. Uh, I grew up uh, in Lebanon. This is where I'm from originally. Um, you know, back in the days in, uh, in Lebanon, back in like, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, it's not like these days, like social media or anything like this. Uh, we used to use uh, sports as an escape uh, to release energy, to have fun, to bond with friends. Uh, right now it's a little bit different with the social media and the phones and the TikToks and all these Absolutely. fun stuff, right? Yeah. So uh, this, I always been to sports. I play a lot of soccer, a lot of football in my, uh, in my young age and transitioned into basketball and playing uh, recreational basketball, college basketball. And then I left to the United States, right? I went there, uh, I was a, me a mechanical engineer and I did my grad school over there. Okay. So all the energy that I was doing and in terms of sports, it transitioned into uh, starting to working out, right? So uh, when I went for grad school, I literally had nothing other than working out and just pretty much uh, studying. That's all I've been doing all day. Um, so uh, everything that I was doing in terms of basketball, soccer, or anything like this, I started putting it into the gym and then working out and then, and then eating. And uh, this is how I would say it transitioned from my early young teens to the early 20s. And uh, this is after that. Uh, but I realize now that I look back, I realize how ignorant I was about the nutrition. Uh, back in the, I would say, uh, in the early 2009, 10, even 10, 11, I don't think we had the exposure 
uh, to internet in terms of knowledge. Like right now, I really think knowledge is everywhere, is on the net. Like of course, there is a lot of misconceptions. Uh, there is a lot of bad information, but there is a lot of good information. So I truly say if somebody wants to learn, it's out there. So you have no excuse uh, right now these days because everything is on the net. So this is when I start uh, getting into it more and more because um, I realized like all I was doing just eat food and working out. And now that I look back, it was not the right thing to do or at least my choices were very poor. I remember very well outside college, we used to have a bunch of fast food places and I thought all I need to do is just eat whatever and working out and I would just, I'm healthy. And this is the big misconception, Sashin, like uh, when I went uh, to the United States, um, we're digging right into nutrition, but uh, I think this was the big um, shocking to me when I started seeing the, the big plates everywhere. Uh, but for me, when I look back right now, it's not as much as the food. Um, it's mostly, in my opinion, uh, it's the, the, the sugar and the beverages. And I think this is one of the biggest problem we have currently in society is the sugar and food. And uh, there's a big misconception on salt. I'm a big fan of salt. Uh, there's a lot of people that scares you out of salt, be careful. Of course, if you had uh, blood pressure issues, of course, it's different. But for a regular person, I think salt is your friend and sugar is your enemy. And unfortunately, you go to the States. I love the States. I'm from there right now. I'm an American as well. Uh, but there's a lot of food everywhere with like, I remember very well, like you'll be eating certain food in a restaurant and you have a beverage, and as soon as it gets to half of it, whoever comes and they fill you back, it's free, free refill. And it's sugar on top of sugar on top of sugar, and then you think you ate a salad, but you ate like four or five cans, cans of sodas that are probably equivalent to 150, 200 grams of sugar. Absolutely. I mean, this is straight killer. Like you're talking about eight, 900 calories of nothing bad, nothing except bad stuff. And that you eat unknowingly. Exactly. And you don't know. Because the problem is uh, people, I mean, the average person, the average Joe, does not have a good grasp and knowledge on the food. They think they're eating right, but they actually are not eating right. And this is the biggest problem we have. Like if you go outside and you go to places, you go to salad bars. And people have, I mean, I mean, I don't want to, like, I don't want to say they're naive, but they're like, they, they think they're doing the right thing by eating a salad, but then they get to the dressing side and you see them pouring ranch and you know, like eight, nine, 10 spoons of olive oil with the vinegar on them. And olive oil is good, but 10 spoons of them are not good, right? So it's all about quantity as well. Like you can, any good food you can eat, you can eat a lot of it, it doesn't, it's not good anymore. Right, Absolutely. and it's the vice versa. Like if you eat a little bit of bad food, it's not the end of the world, right? So this is why I love the rule, the 80-20 rule. So 80%, if, if you do something at 80% of the time in terms of you eating right 80% of the time, you can get away with 10, 20% of cheating here and there. Yeah. Overall, you're a healthy person. So you do not have to be at 100%. And I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make is when they dive into it, they, they just go extreme. And in my opinion, you cannot, you cannot sustain extreme. A lot of people jump into a diet and they go all the way and they get out of it because they can't do it anymore. So good insight, uh, uh, George. From, from your conversation, I, I just want to take uh, one thing. I just want to know about, you said uh, quantity is important. And that's what uh, I've been doing since last six months. One TT is important. And that message actually needs to go to the people that whatever you take, uh, the quantity is important, rather uh, three meals or, or two meals or three meals, right? And you uh, count your calories and by quantity, okay? Correct. So like uh, people, misconceptions like oils, olive oils, fine. Olive oils is healthy. 
uh, cheese is healthy or whatever you said it's a healthy but excess in any quantity Correct. is not good and on top of that you uh, exactly bang on the sugar and that's what the right now uh, we have the problem across the world uh, uh, sugar is people is trying to understand sugar is from the sweet uh, so so can you throw some light on the food uh, uh, which you change over uh, during last, uh, I'm not sure, but from your young age, uh, from middle age, and now, now, what is the uh, what significant change uh, you made in your? Life? Yeah, so I was at the young age. You can get away with anything, right? You can eat fried food for what I care, and I, nothing would happen because I was working out so much. I was running around all day. Your young teens, your metabolism is so high right uh, so we all heard about the rmr your rested metabolic rate so technically when at your arrest what's your metabolic rate technically so how much your body requires certain energy and how much your body is burning in terms of energy right to sustain um so uh, the older you get you, you you don't get away with your uh, with your food choices that you used to make before uh, so at the beginning I was eating anything, but then in my 20s I thought I was doing the right thing by if you go on the typical American diet, it would be your uh, 50 or 60% carbohydrate. Uh, and we're talking about uh, macros right now, which is carbs, proteins, and fats, right? 60% carbohydrate, if you look at people, how they eat, and probably if you're lucky, you get like 30% of protein and 10% of fat, right? But this is the problem. The problem is we're not focused on the right carbs, the right protein, the right fat. Uh, 60, 30, 10, or whatever you want to call it, or 60, or, or I don't know, like 60, 25, 15, or whatever, uh, or 50, 40, 10, uh, is not enough. You need to dig into the carbs, it says. Not every carb is the same. Right, your body does not digest carb any carb the same. You have your vegetables, you have your simple carbs, uh, you have your refined sugars, um, yeah, so you have your complex carbs. This is your body does not digest them the same, nor does it process them the same. So, uh, at the end of the day, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit on how I start moving from one diet to another. And how did I end up in fasting? Because I know this is a big topic for today. Is um, at the end of the day, there's for anybody who's trying to get healthy uh, or trying to get leaner, healthier, lose uh, this excess of fat. It's the game of insulin, in my personal opinion. This is the game of insulin. So, to the viewers out there, what is insulin? Insulin. Yeah. Whenever we judge this food, exactly, I just wanted to touch on this uh, topic because when you go to the doctor, they said, okay, your insulin level, take the tablets and uh, yeah. do it. So good that uh, you uh, pop up this on. Uh, so so let's just get into it. So so let's start. Like whenever you digest any type of food, it's gonna mostly spike your sugar in your blood and your bloodstream. So now your body start to create this insulin which is a hormone to regulate the sugar and take the sugar from your blood and then distribute it inside your body whether it's tissues organs etc etc and now this is a regular normal human being we're talking about right yeah. uh, so what happens is every time you're eating and let's say you're eating these bad carbs let's say you eat a piece of pizza or whatever you have a spike of sugar so now what your body does, it starts rushing into like, okay, I need to make insulin, 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 because I want to drop the sugar, regulate it again. So now you have the spike of insulin. And now you have, after that, because now you're making a lot of insulin to regulate your blood, your, uh, sorry, your sugar inside your blood, you have the drop of insulin. And this is why if you eat a pizza or a burger or fries or whatever, uh, french fries, you're gonna feel like, or a piece of candy, you get the taste of it, you get the spike, and then you drop, you, it drops right away, and then you're hungry again, right? And then your body does not have time to process like you ate something, so you don't feel satiated. So this is the problem with certain amount of carbs, uh, certain types of carbs. You don't feel the satiation. Well, in protein, you do. This is why it sits more, it takes more time, it's more energy to absorb, to eat. That's why you can eat so much meat and you're gonna get full. 
but I bet you if you eat pizza, you can keep going over and over and over again, and you keep getting hungry and hungry just because this spike of insulin up and down. So at the end of the day, without spending too much time on insulin, this is the game. If you want to regulate, if you want to get healthier, you want to regulate this insulin in your body. So whatever, I don't care, whatever um, type of, uh, the type of uh, nutrition or type of uh, diet you're doing, whether you're doing Mediterranean, American, Chinese, uh, Lebanese, whatever uh, you call it, keto, fasting, it's the game of insulin. The more you keep the insulin low, the more you reduce the amount of spikes and drops, the better you are in terms of burning fat. Now this is assuming you're eating below maintenance level. Because at the end of the day, your body has a maintenance of calorie. So what it means, there's a minimum amount of calories that uh, your body needs to sustain. So your body requires a certain amount of energy. Right? So let's say you're a certain person that requires 2,500 calories to maintain your body mass. So you eat 2,500 calories regarding what they are. You're not gonna gain, you're not gonna lose, fine? If you under eat, just to make it very simple, below 2,500, you're gonna lose, your body is gonna go, it's gonna finish with your food, and it's gonna go access anything that they have for energy. And mostly it's fat, right? So after using the, your food that you ate, if you eat more than 2,500 calories, let's say above, so it finished with whatever it's required and it's gonna use the rest of energy. Now, if you work out, it's gonna use the rest of energy that you get from food, hopefully to muscle. If you're eating the bad stuff, some of it will go to muscle, some of it will, if you eat a lot of it, it will go to fat, right? So what I'm trying to say by all of that is, it's important to regulate insulin, However, it doesn't mean you can eat all day and keep your insulin low. Make sense? Yeah. So, so, so I want you to focus on these two things. So if you're trying to get healthy, if you're trying to lose fat, there's two things that you need to do. Eat below maintenance level, meaning be hungry a little bit. Yeah. You need to stay hungry a little bit during the day, plus keep your insulin low. So you see, that this is a good piece of information. I, I, and this is the key, you know, uh, to understanding on the why we say eat less or exactly the quantities matter and how insulin is linked about that. And and then uh, the to use the healthier life. Okay, so you 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 can see that this is a good piece of information. Thanks, uh, George. It's a very detailing uh, information. Let's move on. Uh, uh, on the nutritionist part you already touched upon but I, I want you to you know uh, just uh, give us a nutritionist part and uh, you know, I think we I remember we discussed about the chronological order of the taking foods uh, you know uh, you say at first you take proteins and then carbs for salads and if you allow then you can take the desserts which normally uh, I don't know but I take it uh, as of now a little bit uh, but that's what chronological I understood what we discussed uh, so I need you to uh, touch upon on this uh, chronological order uh, uh, link with the nutritionist and how it works on your body so we talked about uh, a certain amount of your body will require a certain amount of energy to function correct so let's say you eat this amount of energy or this amount of food uh, with certain amount of calories some people think that they don't care when you eat it, how you eat it, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, your body is a system, it's a cycle, it's gonna count a certain amount of energies, it's gonna use them, whether you eat them in the morning, at noon, at night, you spread them, it doesn't matter. I'm not a believer of that because I've used myself, I ate the same food because I'm a nutrition fanatic, I'm an engineer, I like to calculate everything. I've ate the same amount of food, in the morning, lunch and dinner versus five times a day versus I pushed everything to the afternoon. And I can tell you from personal experience, I saw a big difference. In my personal experience, and I've read about it and I've done some research about it, if you start your day with good fat and protein, you are better off in terms of being insulin, uh, in terms of using being insulin sensitive, meaning you can control the, sense, uh, the, the insulin throughout your day way better than if you wake up in the morning and you start your day with a banana and oatmeal. 
Oh. This is my experience. Like, and I'm a big, big believer of that. I always, and I've been always for the last, I would say, two years. Uh, and I'm a big routine fan. Like, I, I do the same. I eat the same food pretty much every day. I always start my day with proteins and fat. And I've read about it, and I'm big, big believer about it. And mostly, I, I, I would like to start my day with eggs, but this is just me. And we're talking about full eggs. I don't like to take the yellow out of it. I love the fat in it because I think it's essential yeah. for you, your body. There's another misconception about cholesterol. Yes. You eat cholesterol, you get cholesterol. I think this has been uh, proven to be wrong. You need cholesterol for your body. So if I would recommend anything from my personal experience, uh, even when I'm doing the fasting or if I was doing the keto, I will always start my day with a salad. Some veggies are fine with a piece of fat, whatever it is. And mostly if you're eating a salad, some olive oil, some avocados, and then a piece of protein, whatever it is. But in that case, what you said is uh, you start with protein. Correct. When we say is protein, it's egg. Yes. Or maybe if you are a veg, we have some alternatives in vegetables. Correct. Uh, but uh, you said uh, we will start with the veggies. Uh, veggies means carbs, right? Veggies and carbs, but we talked about it, we didn't touch too much about it, but in terms of carbs, you have two types of carbs. You have the simple carbs and you have the complex carbs. The simple carbs are everything that have sugar in it, and simple sugar, and including also uh, your flours, such as uh, pastas, your bread, everything that has flour, I think you should get away from, in my opinion. And my body hates flour. If I eat, piece, if I eat bread, I will explode. So, but this is just me. Uh, and you have the pastas. I, I put them all in categories. There is a debate whether rice, it falls here or there. Yeah. But uh, rice is okay. I don't look at it very, in a great way because it, I don't see a lot of nutrition in it. Uh, I prefer different types of rice than the white rice. Uh, I prefer the wild rice, for example. Uh, but in general, I'll stay away from pasta, from the bread. These are all that's gonna spike your insulin uh, fast and it's all about uh, glycemic index as well every type of carb has a glycemic index right yeah. and the more you look into the glycemic index you try to uh, this is when you try to choose uh, certain carbs in a certain way that they're not gonna spike your insulin right so this is where complex carbs will keep your insulin way lower than eating a bread or pasta or sugar in it so for example, in the complex carbs, this is when you have your vegetables, but this is when you can have also a little bit of beans and this will fall into it. So everything that is gonna make you full, make you feel full, uh, and it's gonna take time to digest. And it's all related as well to the amount of fiber. So yeah. a lot of time you, you turn into the, look at the nutrition value and you can see, uh, usually, usually in general, uh, Carbs with high amount of fiber, they're, com they're considered complex, meaning your body will take more time to digest, meaning it's not gonna spike your insulin and crash it. So it's a little, you have a little bit of increase, but it's a little bit more stable than eating a piece of bread. And then you will not end up uh, by crashing, eating, yeah, eating, and, eating and crashing. Eating. And also the one day, the afternoon, uh, the one that you feel like suddenly you feel tired after you ate, it's because of this crash. Uh, whenever you're controlling insulin throughout your day by eating a complex carbs or whether you're doing the fasting that we'll, we'll talk about it extensively yeah. right now, uh, this is why I love fasting because it just removes these cravings and these uh, drops in insulin. Okay, so before uh, moving to fasting now, uh, just quick, uh, quick uh, snapshot on, uh, uh, you, you said we start of the day with the protein, okay. Those who have taken uh, the three meals uh, uh, in a day, which is uh, we will be discussing in fasting, but it's fine uh, if we discounted that one. And if I am taking three meals, it's very small meals. So if I started with the eggs, proteins. Okay, then lunch I will take the carbs again. Or then I would I would do the carbs during the lunch. lunch. So if you're doing three portion, I would always start my food with protein and fat. At if any given want, point of time. Yes, I don't care if you call it lunch, breakfast not being number one, whatever. whatever. First meal, protein and fat. Second meal, if you're insisting on eating carbs, which I'm not against, I eat carbs as well, I would 
I would locate them, push them until uh, in your second meal. And the third meal, I would also stay away from carbs. Some people say like, it doesn't matter when you eat the clock, you can eat at 12 midnight, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't believe in that. When I was doing fasting, there were some times where I stopped at 8 p.m. and there were some times I stopped at 6 p.m. I can tell you I've seen better results at 6 p.m. with the same amount of food. So I would push my carbs during my second, my second meal. The first meal mostly proteins and, uh, and fat and the last meal also protein and fat with some salads. Now, if you work out, I think that would work as two and this is where I would squeeze my workout between number two, between meal number two and between my dinner. So you eat your carbs and protein, you wait a couple of hours, you work out, you wait a couple of hours, you eat your dinner, you're good to go. So this is how I would spread my uh, meal so throughout the day. Best, I mean, the, we, we got the idea actually. You have starts, protein, carbs, and if you protein need and fat at the beginning. protein and fat at the beginning and then carb, and again, if you need it, you can go for days it, but uh, advice, if you are really uh, uh, optimistic and uh, on your health, uh, stay away uh, from the desert uh, sweets. Uh, but it's fine. I mean, sometimes reward meal you can have it. Uh, and uh, as you said, you know, sometimes it's fine, right, uh, to take the meal. Okay, absolutely. Move. And and that's that's a good uh, piece of information, George. Because this is this is misconceptions we have. We we start with the you know, anything what we have uh, right now, because we are hungry. So we generally, we are hungry. We start with anything we have in a plate, you know, uh, cookies or this thing and to, to kill the hunger. So uh, that's what uh, we have to start on this now. Correct. And I would like to add one more thing on this one. Uh, you're, you're touching very well on these and forget about fasting for a second. Let's say somebody does not want to do fasting. Their body cannot take fasting. One thing it's been proven and I can tell the viewers, go do your research and see. Just whenever you wake up, wait two hours before you eat. It makes a huge difference uh, in terms of how your body processes the food throughout the day, your insulin response, the way you digest food, uh, how you feel. If you just give your body uh, some rest the first two hours, just, just, just drink water and then start eating in the so morning in the morning waking whether up. whether you're fasting or not i don't care. Of anything. just okay. take a look take take few hours drink some water drive work drink a little bit of water and then start eating and sin and you can see the big difference. and what do you see what is the analogy uh, behind the analogy this? is also to give your gut some break right because at the end of the day yeah, you you immediately you wake up your cortisol is high exactly and you are hitting on again you start the, the food, food again so at the end of the day, uh, this is very well established, very well published. The gut is one of the most important thing in your body. Everything starts with the gut, ends with the gut. Usually if you can fix your gut in terms of issues, I can tell you, you're gonna see a lot of health uh, benefits out of it. I will uh, come back to on this while we will uh, touch upon the fitness, uh, how uh, fitness on empty stomach and empty stuff. So we will definitely will take it in the last five minutes, five ten minutes on this thing. I have uh, multiple questions on that. Um, so let's move on. The you are, I mean, the best important topic is fasting, which I uh, I'm excited because I have not started yet. I'm I'm on my journey. My sugar is intact now but when i heard you about the fasting and i've known that this is what is now intermediate fasting to be honest i've seen uh, the people doing in wrong way uh, personally before i uh, met you three months back and then i started oh people are really doing completely wrong thing so uh, and misconceptions uh, including me uh, so that's what you know you are uh, correcting me and that's what we have started so let's talk about fasting how you landed on this idea of fasting what makes what made you to think about fasting and uh, giving you uh, yourself uh, 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 what you sort of call as uh, you know uh, why, why why should i do it fasting i mean what are that that point you just hit on this year now let's do that so it started gradually, just like anything else. Uh, I've done a lot of type of um, diets, I would call them. Uh, but 
what, what people need to understand when it comes to food, it's not diet. You have to, it has to be a lifestyle. I've seen a lot of people, they get so much passionate about the food and they want to fix what they're doing and they call it a diet and they want to do it for 10 weeks or six weeks or eight weeks and they don't see results and then they quit. So something that we need to emphasize on, if you, wanna, if you are serious about changing your life, this has to become a lifestyle. There's no such thing like, I hate when people tell me like, well, you're on a vacation, it's okay, have fun. Like, you don't get it. I have fun, I enjoy being me when I'm fasting, when I'm eating the wrong way, the right way. If I eat the wrong way, I'm not happy. I hate myself, I don't feel well. Now, don't get me wrong, I have episodes where I just let go. Like a few days ago, we went crazy. We went on over here with my uh, family and friends and kids and I ate everything. Uh, everything that you can think. I had pizza for lunch, I had, uh, and then after it we went and we had a bunch of dessert, chocolate, and then at night I ate sushi and I couldn't care less because I know like probably for the next 10, 11, 12 day, I'm gonna be 100% on point. And my body, and we'll talk about it in a minute, my body at this point, thank God, like I, uh, I feel great right now. I'm in the best shape and I feel the most, the, the best in my life right now in terms of nutrition uh, and physical. Quick one, did you feel guilt, uh, guilty Absolutely on, uh, not. Once, you, once you ate? Uh... Absolutely not, because I'll tell you why. Now that I've been doing fasting for so long, I know that my body become metabolically flexible and we'll uh, discuss that. That's the point. Yeah. Like, and I know it's not gonna affect my body like it would have affected it five, 10 years ago. Five, 10 years ago, it would have killed me and make me feel bad for two days, physically, not psychologically. Right now, it doesn't matter. I burn it off already and I'm gone. So uh, to tell you how did I get into this, it started slowly and it, it really clicked like in my mid thirties, uh, I would say uh, I'm already, I'm like right now I'm 37. And I would say two, three years ago, I started looking into it and it makes sense for me uh, from just logic a perspective. Uh, if you think about our ancestors, uh, I don't believe they were eating all day. Uh, I believe if you watch the movies, you read the books, they were mostly uh, hunting all day, coming, feasting, and then walking for two, three, four days, stop hunting, feasting. Yes, they were feasting, I, I don't know, what kind of, they're doing everything, they, but then eventually, they stop and they go and walk for two, three days. So if you look at how biologically or like, in, 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 like how we've been got to this point, mostly it's, it's a little bit of fasting, right? So our body is not, I believe our body is not designed to eat all day. This is now it's, how it's supposed to be. And Good it started to make sense and I started doing my research on it and I started listening to people way smarter than me uh, talking about it and then and at the end of the day, experience is the best teacher in life, right? So exactly. unless you try it, you can, I can talk to you about it all day long and either you can believe it, you can laugh about it, but unless you try it, you're not gonna feel it. And I started doing it slowly. And this is one of the things that in terms of fasting, I really encourage people. And we talked about it, me and you, don't jump right into it. Don't go crazy like going from eating four or five times a day bad food to 18, 18 hours of fasting and no, just don't. This, the sudden shock on your body is not the right thing to do. I always believe in step-by-step -step approach. Walk into it just like baby steps, right? So this is what I've done. I used to eat four or five times a day just because I was obsessed by building muscle. And actually I wasn't building that much muscle because I realized later on I was making poor choices of food. But even though, and then I start saying like, okay, well, let me start fixing a little bit what I'm doing. So the more I got into the nutrition and understanding the food, the more I start feeling like, okay, I'm feeling better. What can I do even better? And at this point in my life, uh, I would say about 35, whatever, you start looking, you have family, you have kids. What are my main goals? What's my purpose right now? It's not about anything else. It's about longevity. It's about spending, exactly, yeah, spending time with the kids. Uh, being healthy, feeling great, right? I was before, I got to a point where I was like almost 100 kilos or 95 kilos where 
I bend down to to tie my shoe, I feel like it's, it's too much work. And then or I go down the escalator, I feel too much work. And right now I feel way better than that. So at the end of the day, we're the byproduct of our choices uh, pretty much. So I'm, I just decided to start making better choices. And this is how it started pretty much. So basically, uh to all viewers the message uh, is what we discuss now is take the baby steps uh, uh, in a, a, any conditions uh, in terms of fasting in terms of eating um, and do it slowly and check yourself go slowly check yourself uh, fasting time and all so and listen to your body listen if, yeah. if there's something i would say don't be Hold stubborn on. don't be stubborn i've done yeah. that i've made that mistake do not be stubborn. Yeah, hold take, on that. Take the, take the baby steps, listen to your body. You might feel great for a week. One day your body is telling you, uh-uh, that means stop. stop. Don't, yeah. don't overdo it. Overdo it. Take a step back. And this is why I love fasting. It's not like keto or anything else where keto is a little, I've done keto, it worked well, but what I don't like about keto is like, once you get into keto, if you make certain bad choices, you're out of it. And now you have to, kind of like takes time to get back again. Well, it's fasting. You can fast for five, six days and take a break for one day, or you can start with <clears throat> fasting two, three days and not fast for two, three days, that's fine. There's nothing, it, it, there's no rule for it. So it's a little bit, what I love about fasting is very, very uh, convenient. And not only that, it's very flexible. And this is okay. where uh, it starts, flexibility and convenience. So, uh... <coughs> George, thanks. I think th this is what the quick one uh, now uh, from uh, my side. Timings uh, for the beginner, uh, ambitious, mid-level. So, what do you advise for the <coughs> beginner to start with, and how how uh, uh, we can implement for the beginner? What is your advice, and what is your experience? So, that? first, I would start by making the right choices with food. Forget about fasting. Okay. You make the right choices with foods. You're eating the right stuff. Yeah. You feel right. Uh, I, I encourage exercising as well because I I, in my, I believe they go hand by hand. Uh, then, if you're starting to into fasting, I would start with what we said earlier. Push your food two three hours. Oh. You wake up at six. Start eating at nine or ten. Don't eat right away. So if you stop eating. <clears throat> at 8 p.m. the day before, and then you don't start on let, until 10, well, guess what? These are 14 hours. 14 hours. Easy, That's it. Easy, yeah. So this is it. So the key is, if the key doesn't start with a new day, the key is to start with the previous day. And you spend time in sleeping almost pretty uh, much uh, pretty much on eight, nine hours, uh, um, eight hours even though you sleep. So earlier to two hours and later two hours. So correct. Yeah, I mean almost 13, 14 this, hours. Exactly, and this is whoever. what you're saying is very true in terms of sleeping. Sleeping is as most as important as anything else we just discussed. It, I don't care what kind of diet you're on. I don't care if you're working out every day. If you're sleeping bad, your whole system is bad. So first, I would say go back. I would fix my sleeping. An average human being uh, with our age, I would say in 20s, 30s, 40s, we require at least six to eight hours of sleep. There are studies on that. Go read it, do your research, you'll find. Less than six hours, uh, your whole body is messed up. Your testosterone is so low in terms of for, uh, for, for men. And you can see you're not gonna be able to function properly. Even if you do it for a short amount of time, eventually it will catch up. And then after that, some people require nine hours and that's fine. But anything below six, I believe is not very well. So fix, first I would fix my, my sleeping. You fix your sleeping, you're sleeping the right way. Stop, your, stop eating a little bit earlier. If you were eating at going out and eating at nine and 10 p.m., start eating at 8 p.m. I would start with actually with 8 p.m. Don't, start, don't stop at six. Stop at eight as a first step. Stop at 8 p.m., do your thing, drink water, go to sleep. Whether you sleep at 10, 11, I don't care. Matter, yeah. Just stop eating. So now we stop eating at eight, you wake up at six, you don't eat until 8 p.m., this is already 14 hours. So I will start with uh, 8 a.m. So, and then I will start with that, correct? 
and slowly but surely listen to your body and start adding if you feel great one day start adding 30 minutes and this is what i've done i've done i started with 12 hours and i started increasing it in the 14. the big jump for me was the 14 to 16. Ah, okay. once i start getting very comfortable with the 16 things after that after a few months i got into the 18 hours of sleep so, and 18 hours of fasting and so, this is where i felt the best so basically what you said is resistance is on 16 hours basically if you achieve that and then the main challenge is to be ambitious and if you are ambitious drink water but what's most important for is drink, you have to be drinking water. you have to hydrate so i cannot uh, other than I, water what, what do you advise drink water during the fast Theoretically, if you look at the theory behind it, and uh, let's just talk a little bit how fasting started. Fasting started by, by the way, there's no clear cut evidence okay. that it does work. The way it worked, uh, the way it came up, actually they've done a lot of studies on rats, and they noticed that for rats, if you feed them and then within eight hours, within 24 hours, you, you make them fast for 16 hours, you let them eat whatever they eat in eight hours window, uh, right, so they were actually losing body fat. So they were like we're giving the the rat same amount of food or the mice, and then they're actually losing. But we're just restricting them their window. So this is how it started, right? But not only that, um, and this is what uh, sp spiked my curiosity into the subject. There is enough evidence right now and literature uh, that says that people. Uh, who fast regularly have uh, longer life expectancy. Actually, there is a study done in University of Boston. It's a very well documented study that shows if you do during your lifespan, are you ready for this? If you do one time, one time in your whole life, seven day water fast, your risk of having cancer decreases by 70%. 70%. Seventy percent. One time. Why? One time is... One time in your life. Life. You decide. Seven stretch. days. Oh, Just okay. do one time stretch. You decide to do it. Seven days, your uh, percentage or chance of getting cancer is reduced by 70%. Why? So let's talk about the fasting thing, right? Um, so, so what's happening during the fasting? Uh, so you stop eating for between zero and eight hours. Technically, your body is digesting all the food that you ate. Glucose, whatever, everything you ate, everything is gone almost and then is digested and ready to go. From 8 to 16, this is when your body starts getting into ketosis. Ketosis means then this is when your body starts to produce ketosis, which is uh, a substance in your body done whenever we're using fat as a source of fuel. So your body requires source of fuel to function, correct? Yeah. Most people are carb adapted. Most people use carbs as a source of fuel. Here the key is to start using fat as a source of fuel. Because we all have a certain level of body fat in our body, body fat. correct? Yes. If you can get your body to use the fat for fuel, guess what? Now you're reducing the amount of fat. However, you need to be in a calorie deficit you cannot be eating all day and telling your body okay well, i'm gonna fast now so between the eight hours window eat 10 pizzas and five burgers and say and well i got into ketosis so here you go it doesn't work like this so you have to eat below maintenance level so your body has to be hungry you have to feel a little bit of hungry because at the end of the day what are we trying to do we are putting stress on our body to uh, from it from the stress of the body to, to 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 use it in a certain positive way Okay, so your body is technically freaking out. They're like what's going on? I need food. What are you doing? I've been without food for 16 hours and it's gonna go with it because it's in the under maintenance level in terms of calories So it ate all the stuff now in your body So now it goes and goes to your fat and start using them for fuel It's 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 technically in a survival mode. This is what your body's doing exactly yeah. And that's when the whole study of seven day fasting, because after, so from zero to eight, your body consumes the calories in your body. From eight to 16, this is when you start producing ketosis and start using fat, fat as a source of fuel. But after 16 hours, the amount of ketosis spikes and now you start having 
actually uh, increase in growth hormone in your body. And after that, this is when the fun starts. This is when the dead cell, the bad cells in your body dies and regenerate, right? Yeah. So this is where the seven day fasting, so you're past 16 hours by so far. So now uh, we call it autophagy, means autophagy, yeah. it takes all the bad stuff in your body in terms of cells, get rid of them, regenerate the new cells. And guess what? The first cells that dies, or some of the first cells that dies in your body are actually the potential cancerous cells. And this is why there's a percentage of higher percentage for people just to yes to uh, to to have less cancer yeah if you do the seven day water fast so this is why it's and some people do if if you look at uh, recent people like some celebrities uh, like Dana White they have done the I believe either it was eighty six or ninety six hours which is a three and a half days and he'll tell you he felt the best thing in his life because technically. You, after your 24 hours, you get into this mode, and the more you can prolong it, the more beneficial it becomes. Good, absolutely. And so now uh, uh, we start with this. Uh, what George said, I start with a simple two hours break, sleep two hours break. Don't start uh, first thing first in the morning with the food, and keep some time. So 14 hours, you can do it. It's fine if it is not 14 hours, 12 hours. That's fine. Start with eight hours, nine hours, twelve hours. So that is that is what we can we can do it. Uh, simple, small steps, baby steps. That's a message. Uh, and I and I agree, George. I mean, this is, this is what uh, we need to do it. And uh, I, as you said, uh, you know, it's energized and everything. Uh, uh, we can see the benefits. And the most important thing, what you shared, which I didn't know, to be honest, seven. Uh, Seven days fasting, seventy percent uh, decrease uh, of uh, cancers and things, which is very good information. So, and it is documented. You said um, well taken, and that that's uh, one. Now, fasting, agree, done. Uh, just uh, touch upon the last point uh, before end uh, ending our sessions. Uh, uh, the workouts. Okay, so you do workout. I know. I saw your. Uh, physique, awesome man. I mean, that time your physique was so much. But before that, uh, just quick one. Give me the numbers, and then we will move on immediately. Quick, give me the numbers. Where did you? When did you start? Uh, at what uh, kg and what weight? And where are you? And what are the durations? Quick one. So in quick one, I started uh, recently uh, before before moving after moving from the state to Kuwait. Uh, so I started, I was around 206 pounds, 205 pounds. Uh, so I believe that's around 93 kgs and currently I'm around 80 kilos. Awesome. So I dropped 13 kilos in the last uh, five, six months. Oh. Uh, but this is mostly because I just refocused on the fasting. I've, I've been through uh, some changes in my life recently with the move. So I was not able to do everything just like I wanted, but now I'm fully back on track uh, for the last eight months, and uh, yes, I dropped, I would say, 13 kilos, and it's mainly uh, body fat. I know that because I work out regularly, and I can tell from my strength, uh, from my strength training, I still uh, maintain the same amount of weight. So uh, this is how I know. So 13 kg, five months. Yes. Still fasting. Yes. Moderately. No, right now I'm full and full right. Mode. Like right, right now, I moved from 16 hours. Right now, I'm very comfortable with 20 hours. 20 hours. So old. actually, this is what I've been doing for the last few months. I've been doing 24, uh, 20 hours of fasting and four hours of food. Mostly two meals. If I'm working out, yeah. I do a meal before workout, meal after I, workout. I need on. I I just touch upon that, George. Uh, uh, the what we discussed on this meal uh, portion. Mm -hmm. So quick one. You said uh, okay. What you uh, told me that six o'clock. Uh, you go to the from the office. You work out before uh, meal. Take the meal at eight o'clock, mm -hmm. six o'clock. Go yes. to sleep. Morning, again that cycle. And morning, when did you eat? I wouldn't eat until like I come back home. So technically, I have two days. If I have a very heavy workout, I would eat in the office around four p.m. I go home around six p.m. I would work out, and at eight p.m. 
I would eat. So with between four and eight, I've ate twice and I've worked out. Oh, okay. So this is 20, 20 hours of fasting and four hours of food. But there's the days when I'm not working out at well as uh, at all. I just take the whole 22 hours of fast. I eat one time and oh, that's one it. time. Okay. And all that right. would be the okay. until the second day. So that would be the ambitious, uh, ambitious target. But guys, hold on. I mean, uh, uh, as George said, he is reading a lot. He is uh, uh, searching. Research has done, uh, he, and he's implementing on his health. Uh, he's fitness speaker uh, not now since almost <laughs> 20 years 25 years so start with uh, start with the uh, you know uh, slow move and uh, move on fasting this is a fantastic information uh, shared by uh, George uh, now quick one before we close up I want uh, uh, the advice on the workouts uh, now workouts when we say the again there is a misconception on weight cardio and there is another things you are giving to the I, I'm not sure about that concept. I, I need to uh, read that again. I was reading wherein you have to give shock to your body like climbing, uh, roping or high uh, intensity work, uh, high intensity workout. Yeah, these so, are the three three categories what I've read it. Correct. So I mean, at the beginning, again, if you're into the fasting thing, and you would like to implement some, I mean, it's, it's basically about what we discussed at the beginning of uh, making the right choices. So I believe as well, it's very well documented. You implement the right nutrition, you have to, to work out as well. You have to maintain a certain amount of body mass, uh, yes. muscle mass, lean mass for you uh, to be also healthy because it's related to longevity as well. Uh, so first, if I'm new to this and I'm fasting, I would start with moderate ex exercise, nothing crazy. Uh, for me, one of my favorite workouts, three times a week, full body workout. These are more than enough and it will make you feel really good and you're really serious about it. It will transform your body. One of the problems that happens is people jump right into it. They want to do the fasting and they want to work out every day and then they were burn out. But it doesn't work this way, right? Take it easy on your body. Uh, you want to make the shock sure, but just don't destroy yourself. Yes. Uh, so first start with the fasting, start inducing a little bit of workout three times a week. I think that would be a great start. Minimum. Then, minimum. I would say three times a week is great. Great. Three to, to four week. times yeah. a week. I would say two to four times. So or any, any, any cardio or any, any. Start with cardio and then start implementing strength training in terms of working out. Uh, anything in terms of strength training, meaning you're putting, you're using weights, uh, machines, whatever, uh, to yeah. put some amount of resistance training. This is why we call it resistance training, resistance training yeah. uh, just to uh, resist training on your body parts and then uh, you, you'll feel way better. But the key to all of this that I would like to say is patience. You need to, see, you need to be patient with it. Uh, you need to have, think about long term. Uh, you have to be consistency and you have to have the discipline. If you have all of these, I believe it's a recipe for success. But if you don't feel like, and it's not for everybody. And by the way, so you're gonna feel, some people will Selling. throw some negativity on you yeah. because it's not, not everybody does it. And it's not the easy way. And just like with everything in life, right? I mean, you make your choices and to, to each his own. So uh, what's important is that, uh, Throw away the negativity, focus on you, uh, take it easy, slow, slowly, surely, but you have to think long term, you have to think uh, this is a lifestyle, and you have to be disciplined about it, because consistency, I believe, what's going to show you results. And this is the best, uh, best uh, discussion, uh, as you said, and well said, as consistency, uh, uh, work hard, and uh, if you want to really uh, want to make changes, uh, in your life, uh, you should be a consistent, uh, predetermined, uh, and the more go slow. Again, I'm just uh, emphasizing on. Uh, thanks, George. But uh, before uh, I will not leave you uh, like this, but I want you to uh, please give us uh, some overall what we discuss as a takeaway for my uh, uh, viewers. Uh, Chris, 
that they can understand what we discussed is you know five points four points just final takeaways and then we say goodbye sure so first we said fix your sleep fix your sleep uh, I would start with that uh, make sure you hydrate very well uh, we didn't talk about quantities but usually uh, two to three to four between two to four liters per day is pretty good uh, some say a gallon per day is pretty good for hydration uh, so fix your sleep hydration uh, fix your food uh, start to be into a little bit um, below maintenance level if you're into transforming your body composition uh, eat below maintenance level and push your food a little bit to a little bit uh, later in the day I would start and then start with proteins and fat as the first source and then if you're really into fasting you gotta think lifestyle uh, longevity uh, long term um, and then start with the regular 12 14 hours and if you can get to 16 and 18 and 18 you're gonna really start I believe see real benefits once you start fasting for 18 hours and taking six hours of uh, and within these six hours, don't spend your six hours of eating. Just eat two meals or three meals. What's important about fasting is not just the six hours of eating and 18 hours of fasting, it's during the six hours what you do. Pick two meals and eat them and don't eat anything in between. So it's very important not to stack in between because at the end of the day, your friend is insulin and your enemy is insulin. You control your insulin, you control your body. And then fix your gut because gut, I believe, is um, the source of all the problems in your body. So you fix your gut, you fix your sleep, you fix your nutrition. I can tell you, you're going to transform your life. And at the end, I would like to close by something. Go and jump right into it. Patience is key. And every once in a while, uh, you're going out with friends, with family. You feel like you need a treat. Go for it. But then you wake up the second day and then you get back to it. I think, uh, thanks Josh, uh, to be honest, this is a great discussion, insight uh, for the viewers and um, uh, I will not leave uh, George like this next, I think I have discussed with George and we will come back with the Keto, uh, he has a good knowledge but uh, today's session is um, all about uh, fasting, nutritionist and start your journey uh, for longevity, feel good, energize. Uh, guys, uh, you will see the more people on this uh, channel uh, like uh, George uh, and I really, I was excited and I'm really happy that uh, we had a good discussion, George. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you have good info and uh, definitely we will be having more information uh, uh, episode with you. Um, thanks again uh, to viewers who, um, for watching and uh, yesterday's video, I have seen a lot of uh, uh, excitement and uh, expecting expectation from us uh, and we will come up with a uh, lot of things uh, uh, on this channel share and care guys please if you have anything uh, which is we not covered we have not covered if you think your way please share and care thanks bye bye see you in next episode thank you so much George thank you thank you for having me Thank you.